And we're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with the Honorable Gary Marr and Sandra Pupatello. Sandra, uh, we're just about to get into the trade infrastructure aspect of uh, sort of our discussion of some of these economic issues. Do you want to start us off on that? Well, sure. I think uh, people who study history know that uh, there was a massive shift or milestone reached every time we had major trade or corridor infrastructure built. And we're on the cusp of that right here in Windsor with the new Gordie Howe Bridge being built, uh, watching it sort of climbing every day now. Uh, it's, uh, take, it's taken a long time. Uh, back to Gary's point, uh, this infrastructure is massive. It takes a long time. It's almost as if you have three economic cycles before you even get permission to build the infrastructure you needed for the first economic cycle. And that's very difficult. Um, the Port of Vancouver, for example, all of a sudden, uh, people are recognizing the importance of that port, and they've been in they're into their 10th year of approvals uh, through their assessment processes to be enhancing their infrastructure. And, you know, at some point, we've got to say, you know, is it a crisis that demands fast action? Uh, we certainly had that when it came to the infrastructure that was at risk, a security risk at that time, whether that was the trucker convoy, the stoppage of the, of the uh, international crossing right here in Windsor, and governments of all stripes of all levels acted very quickly. Uh, and maybe that's what it takes. It's an imperative that says, let's get this trade corridor fixed. Um, that means, you know, resourcing the, the, the extremities, the internal uh, ports as well, not just, uh, you know, Halifax and, and Vancouver, Montreal, uh, but even the internal intra-lake uh, um, struggles that they have. We know what they are, and the leaders in those organizations certainly have been pointing to them for some time. Gary Marr, a trade infrastructure, obviously uh, something that you care about at the Canada West Foundation. What's your perspective? Well, let me say, first of all, it's not just about energy, but, you know, the crisis in Ukraine has pointed out uh, the desire and the need for Europe to have another source of natural gas and oil. But we, the reality is we don't have the capacity to send it there. Uh, I think over the past 15 years or so, um, the United States has built perhaps a dozen LNG terminals, Australia, similar, similar story. And over that same period of time, we've gotten one done. Uh, almost. Uh, it'll be ready to uh, export. Uh, LNG Canada will be ready to export in 2025. Um, the, the issue is not just energy, though. It is a whole host of issues that, that are really important to the standard of uh, living, uh, the quality of life that we enjoy in Canada, because we are more trade dependent in terms of our GDP than just about any other country that I can think of. Uh, more than half our GDP comes as a result of our uh, of, of trade. And so it's important uh, to note that the World Economic Forum does a survey of trade reliability across the world. And uh, Canada was once in the enviable position uh, in the late, you know, 2009, 2010 of having top 10 reliable infrastructure. We've now dropped to number 33. Um, I think this, this is, as Sandra says, perhaps you know, uh, a reckoning that we need to deal with um, more immediately and have a sense of urgency uh, to fix this problem. So what, what does uh, government, uh, provincially, federally, what do they have to do to, to alleviate this issue, do you think? You know, one of the things that uh, we talk about is, you know, is infrastructure shovel ready? That's the wrong test. The, the test should be, is the infrastructure shovel worthy? And you can calculate the ROI on, uh, on uh, you know, pieces of infrastructure that can tell you that this is more meritorious than, you know, than uh, something that's ready to go right now. And I think that that's the focus that we need to go down. Perrin Beatty, uh, the, uh, you know, at the uh, Chamber of Commerce has talked about it. Uh, Canada West Foundation's produced a report on it. Um, people at the uh, Business Council of Canada uh, have also been very supportive of this idea that we have to go to shovel worthy infrastructure and and having that kind of criteria being applied to say the Canada infrastructure bank uh, might be able to get past the political morasses that we sometimes have um, and trying to get infrastructure done um, you know that's made on political a political basis rather than 
um, one that is more objective and is um, measurable in terms of its uh, positive contribution to Canada. Sandra, we're just, we're just about at the break, so I, I want to give you a, a full amount of time rather than cutting you off. We'll take our break right now, and we'll hear what Sandra has to say about that after that break. Please stay with us. <laughs> 